Okay. Good morning. Let's talk about tattoos. Did you know that in ancient Greece and Rome, outcasts of society were um, tattooed to show their social status as a criminal outcast or uh, prisoner of war criminal. And now 42% of American adults have one or more tattoos. I'm Riley Fortier, and I did my senior project on researching the answer to the essential question, what makes a good tattoo? I, I uh, surveyed friends and family. I um, interviewed my birth mother, and I created my own tattoo designs in eight different styles. I believe that a good tattoo has three quality, has three components. Um, cohesive style, quality artwork, and most important of all, an original design with person. Now I'm going to share with you the different styles of tattoos, the eight different styles. First one being traditional. Uh, this is, it's a very, uh, very bold lines, vibrant colors. It consists of crosses, hearts, and, you know, anchors, stuff like that. And you can see my, uh, my drawing on the, on the right there, pretty real one. The next style is realism. It looks super real. It looks like you could touch it. It looks like, a, like it was a face, like a real person or a real animal. And it's usually just black, black ink. That's it. The next style is watercolor. This is, uh, it's very whimsical. It looks like it was someone painted on your arm. And you have my purple finch on the right and a real, it's like a red fox there. All right. The next style is uh, tribal and it's usually only black ink and it's very bold, dark lines. And it just represents different tribal cultures with different patterns. And there's my tribal hand tattoo on the right. There's a big uh, arm and neck tribal tattoo. The next style, this is the um, this is neo-traditional. It's the fist style, and it's um, it's very decorative, very detailed, lots of colors. Not unnecessary, I would say, but very out of like it shouldn't be that color, if you know what I mean. But it's it's very nice. It's vibrant, decorative, and there's mine on the left there. It's a cat. I think it's pretty good. I mean, mine on the right, yeah. <laughs> the next style is black work. This is just features just black ink, and it's a lot of geometric designs, you know, that I'll show at the end. Um, and there's mine there on the right. It's like New Hampshire hiding in the mountains, kind of like, kind of fits in there. The next style is Chicano. This is the seventh style, and it has a lot of Mexican influence. It, it originated in prison. That's what the origin is. It's from prison. It has a lot of gang depictions, a lot of dramatic black and gray. And there's my, my skull hand tattoo there. I like it. I think it turned out pretty well, and there's a large back piece. And then the last style is trash polka. It's just red and black. It's like two, two uh, different things trying to unite in an image flow together. And I like mine. It's, it signifies life and death. It's, it's, uh, my find going through a broken heart. I like it. And now, this is uh, when I, when I uh, interviewed my birth mom, Jen, she was talking about, oh, she sent me this picture. This is her first tattoo when she was 24. It's dedicated to me. It's baby feet around her tummy, around her belly button. And then this is her leg sleeve. It has a really good cohesive style. It's, it's got like, it has a tiger going down into like a bouquet of flowers and it really flows together with the waviness of the lines and the repetition of those different flowers. I think it's a great piece and I think she's going to do more of it. There's a lot of uh, open spots left. I think she's going to do a lot. And another, uh, these are some big factors when it comes to a good tattoo. This is like the artwork specifically. And a big one is saturation. Do your colors last? Are they deep? And this is, on the left, is a really good example of a deep, rich, lasting color. Someone paid a lot for that. And then on the right, it's just, there's no contrast. It looks like burnt pieces of paper, you know? The next is line work. If you don't have good line work, then the tattoo probably will not turn out. Well, this is a really good example of, you know, I know what I'm doing. 
I have steady hands and I or I don't. Uh, I think this is a beautiful deer tattoo right here. I think this is something my dad would get. Uh, if, he, if he would get a tattoo and on the right, it looks super choppy. It's sorry, it makes it, it's super choppy, and uh, the head of the dragon has no shading or anything. It just looks weird, you know. And then the next is your cohesive style, like the deer components of your tattoo. Do they go well together? You know, this is all about composition. And um, this is a really good example of something that really goes together. And then we have a cover-up tattoo on the right. And they, that's it better flows together, the uh, chemical structure and that neo-traditional looking fish. It looks pretty cool. Uh, the, the big factor after you get the tattoo is the healing. This is a really well-healed tattoo right here on the left. All you can see all the lines, super dark, and this is scabbing up here. And it just looks like it's fading away. It's not even there anymore. And before you even uh, start even working on the tattoo, your biggest uh, component is your placement. This is a re really good to place tattoo. I think it fills the whole canvas. This is planned out. And then on the right, you just have this floating thing that could be, you know, so much more. It could be the canvas is so big, you know, you could do something more with that. But I said you just put that. And another thing is contrast. This is what creates like a 3D image. And it really looks like those horns are going back into the guy's calf there. It looks like you could grab them. And then on the right, it's just, it, it looks like a cartoon cat, you know. And another big one is proportion. Uh, this is especially important when you're drawing faces for animals or people. You can tell between what's good and bad. The good one looks like a thousand dollar tattoo. It looks like someone who actually exists. And on the right, it looks like, a, I don't know, it looks like a potato. Kind of with the faces. Uh, another big one is your details. This is what helps you feel the tattoo. You know, um, it's uh, this one kind of looks watery over here, and this one on the left it looks like you can really feel it. And the last one is your legibility. I can easily tell if this is an elephant, but over here I don't know what that says. I really don't. I haven't been able to read that ever since I put it in the slideshow. That's why I thought it was a really good example of something that's not really legible, something you should not get tattooed. And the last big uh, one of the three components to get tattooed is your original design, your personal meaning. This is a mother, uh, a mother, or sorry, a father-daughter tattoo, and it's like it's a lifeline tattoo. And at the beginning of the lifeline, it says J-H, which is their initials. And then at the end, it says Y-A-H. Y -A -H. You can see that at the end of the lifeline. It's just a funny word they used to say when they were younger. They added in to personalize it even more. Then the arrow going through it is just to show when you're feeling down. All you have to do is pull back the arrow and shoot you forward. And it means a lot to them. That's why it's a true tattoo. And this is another, uh, this is a mother-daughter tattoo with my cousin Jessica and my aunt Sue. And this is a endless knot tattoo with the mother with her arms around her daughter. And they each got this tattoo and personalized it by getting each other's favorite color. And the last slide here, this is my, uh, my cousin Michael Patrick Keneally's tribute to his dad. Michael's dad died when he was just 13 years old. And he got this tattoo to dedicate to his father's Irish heritage. And it has, it's this amazing Celtic cross. It has uh, Rip MJC, his dad's initials, the day he was born, the day he died. And it's a, just a beautiful, like a knotted Celtic cross. This took over five hours to complete. And this is, a, this is just a really, really good, like example of an, like all those components put together, you know? Cohesive style, uh, quality artwork, personal meaning, and it's an original design. In conclusion, you know, this is this is really what inspires me to get my tattoo when I'm 18. Thank you. That's awesome. Better than last time.